If you would like to develop your ability to read light and shoot without a light meter, I've put this video together with some tips that I'd like to share that I've learned along my journey. And these are to help you understand light better when you're using a meter and when you're not. Let's talk about something important. Put that coffee down. So my first tip and most important one is to embrace the fear of getting it wrong. Because whether or not you're shooting with a light meter, you're likely to get a bunch of exposures wrong on any roll of film anyway. So once you embrace that fear of making mistakes and stop beating yourself up about getting a few or a whole bunch of bad exposures on a roll of film, you'll be able to reframe failure as something positive. Because when you fail, you're going to learn. And if you look at that as a good thing, you will let go of that fear and stop it from holding you back. And the more you adopt that psychological mindset of failure being a positive thing, the quicker you'll actually learn any given skill. So I think it's good to remember that and doing something like street photography, you can't take yourself too seriously. So embracing that fear, I think, is the first step. All right, so the second tip, and this one's non-negotiable, is to learn the Sunny 16 rule. So you need to be able to know when having your settings at 1 500th of a second and uh, F16 just won't cut it here in the shade, for example. That way, whether you're shooting meterless or not, even if you have a camera with a meter, you'll be able to recognize errors and to try and tr trust your judgment more. So you need to learn that Sunny 16 table. People can learn entire languages. You can learn the Sunny 16 table. Always know the table before you shoot. And because there's so many versions out there and they're all more or less the same, I won't recommend any particular one, but just find one or two that you like, study them and learn the Sunny 16 rule. Good, now memorize it. I'm sure there's even videos out there on YouTube breaking down how this works, but if you would like me to make one showing how I use it in practice out on the field, let me know in the comments. All right, so my third tip is to get a base reading, especially when you're starting off and continue to develop your skills. Don't be afraid to carry a light meter with you. Just to get a base. Just to get a base. Just to get a base. So that what that means is that when you're out and about and you're still starting off your session, perhaps get a reading, see how that was against your guess and then use that as a learning tool. And also having that base reading gives you something to work off for the rest of the session in case the light isn't really changing. Or you can get that base reading for the shadow like I'm in right now, get another reading for the highlights, and that way you can um, use those two figures to extrapolate between for each scene that you're shooting. The fourth tip I have for you is to meter first. All right, so meter before you shoot. Figure out the settings that you think you should be using before you take the shot. Always have those exposure settings ready. I'm afraid they're going to shoot first and ask questions later. Have that before ideally raising the camera to your eye. You don't want to be having the camera to your eye and then trying to figure out your exposure. Try and be ready. That's one of the advantages and the main reasons why I shoot Sunny 16 is that I have that meter reading ready. And this will tie a little bit into the next rule. And that next rule is always be metering. A, B, C. A always, B, B, C closing. And what I mean by this is that when you're out shooting, or maybe even when you're not, just develop your basic understanding by often reading the light. Just guess what the exposure would be for, for this area in the shade or for that area or whatever it might be. Always be closing. Once you learn the Sunny 16 rule, exercise it, always be metering, always be guessing what the exposure might be, whether you're out with your camera or if you really want to practice in shorter amount of time, even when you don't have your camera. And my last tip pretty much goes without saying, and that is to practice. The only way to commit this stuff to memory is to practice it, uh, trust yourself, go through all those previous five tips and put in the hours. Anything you want to get good at requires you to practice and put in those hours. So it could take you months or years and uh, you'll never be perfect. I've been doing this for years and I'm still not perfect. I still mess up exposures. So keep that in mind, but stick with it. Maybe you could practice in front of a mirror or something. And hopefully you'll become better at reading light whether you're using a meter or when you're not. So that means when you have a light meter, you'll know when to trust it and when to override those settings because you'll have that basic understanding. So I think it can go a long way if you put in those hours. Okay, those are my six tips for shooting without a meter. I've also put them in written form over on my blog if you'd like them for reference. The link for that is in the description. Let me know if you'd be interested in that more in-depth instructional video. But for now, I hope you found this one helpful and thanks for watching Pushing Film. It takes brass balls to sell real estate. Go and do likewise, gents.